I said that 2024 is going to be a really crazy cycle to pull, and Nikki Haley's entry into the race is already giving us some unexpected things to talk about. Here's the bottom line up front. She beats Biden in a 2024 matchup, and Trump doesn't. Now, I know I probably just lost about half the people watching this video, but the rest of it's going to be why I think these results are, at this point, not quite the good news for Nikki Haley that they seem to be at first. But let's talk likability. Her number is 47%, which is about the same as Trump and Biden, but only 17% have a very favorable impression of her, which is 10 points less than Trump. Where she does better is that her unfavorables are at 37%, way less than Trump's 52%. But that's because 16% of voters are not sure about her, and everyone has an opinion about Trump. Here are his latest numbers. And finally, DeSantis, who does five points better than either of them and tops Trump's very favorable number by six points. But right now, what mostly counts is Republican numbers. Nikki Haley is, after all, running as a Republican. She has a 55% favorable rating among Republicans, which makes her about as favorable as Kevin McCarthy. But that's 20 points less than Trump. And her very favorable number among Republicans is 30 points worse than his. If she's doing this much worse than Trump among Republicans, then why is she about on par with him, with all voters? Well, here are the Democrat numbers. 20 points higher than Trump's are. In fact, not far behind her rating among Republicans, only 14 points behind. It really is a Democrat-only signal because she isn't beating Trump among independents. So let's get back to the caveats for why she's probably not going to be president, at least based on numbers right now. So, of course, one is that she is the least likable of the two current major candidates. Caveat two is that Republicans don't want her as their candidate, which is probably going to make the primary a tough one for her. We gave Republican voters a choice of who should be the Republican nominee, and Trump beats her soundly, 52% to only 15%. In fact, he also easily beats Ron DeSantis here as well. Now, we've asked this question before, but this is the first time we put Nikki Haley in there. And here are the results from last time. Trump actually does significantly better, even though another candidate is added into the mix. Nikki Haley's 15% is coming entirely from DeSantis and other candidates. Here's the other crazy thing to note. Trump has gained seven points from last time, but that last time was only a little over a week ago. And that brings us to caveat three, Trump's low point. Now, we don't track Trump favorability numbers daily like we do Biden's. But we've asked enough matchups and favorability sets to know that 2022 wasn't really a good year for Trump. He started okay, but then had the Mar-a-Lago raid, among other complications, a massive electoral upset in November, where Republicans seriously underperformed expectations. The largest generic ballot lead in Republican history, if you recall. The Trump camp might say that his endorsement record is all he needed to obtain in November, but since over three quarters of Republicans say that the GOP is the party of Trump and MAGA, I think he took a pretty big hit from the midterms. Then Republicans got to see their leaders stay the same, with Trump backing McCarthy, and less than half of Republicans wanted McCarthy as speaker. I would also add the vaccines in here. Trump still hasn't disavowed the vaccines, despite being given multiple chances but 56% of Republicans think the vaccines are causing a significant number of unexplained deaths. And 60% of Republicans think that there are legitimate reasons to be concerned about the safety of the vaccines. And that isn't just a Republican phenomenon either. 44% of independents and Democrats think there are reasons to be concerned about vaccine safety. And this is a very clear place. Trump could separate himself in a way that might pick up crossover votes. But I digress. Here is the recent Trump matchup where he lost to Biden. I think it was Trump's low point and probably Biden's high point, considering it was polled on the two days following the State of the Union address, and he got a bit of a job approval bounce. And keep in mind, every single time we've asked this question since November 2020, Trump beat Biden soundly. For caveat four, we need to see the Biden-Haley matchup. Here, she wins by four points, and Trump lost by three. But these numbers are in the low 40s, and there are 13 points of undecideds. The results from this kind of question really aren't going to be clear until the numbers get close to 50%. But what you can do is compare how many votes Nikki Haley gets by demographic compared to Trump. These numbers are the difference 
between her margin with Biden and Trump's margin with Biden. Nikki Haley is doing massively better with men than Trump, believe it or not, and even better with middle-aged voters than men. But Trump does better with younger voters by quite a bit. Hispanic voters are Nikki Haley's best race, but she's also doing well with white voters and about equal among black voters. But let's talk about party to see my fourth caveat. All of this pickup over Trump is coming from Democrats. And here's the rub. When push comes to shove, she's not going to get these Democrat votes. Democrats never cross over to the extent they say they will in early polling. See last November for a recent example. So that does it. Nikki Haley's numbers look good on the surface, but they're being driven by Democrat support that will almost entirely evaporate. Let's face it, a loyal and energetic party base is probably one of the best things that you can have to get you through a primary and presidential cycle. And right now, Trump's is still the biggest, twice the size of DeSantis and three times the size of Nikki Haley's. I'll also add that these results were pulled before Trump's trip to East Palestine, Ohio which seems like it may have been just the right thing to have done to pull him out of his rut. There's going to be a lot more excellent polling coming out between now and November 2024. Subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter so you don't miss it. If you want to support us further, you can subscribe as a reader on our website to get access to our stories the moment they come out. Or you can sign up for a free daily newsletter at the link in the YouTube description to get an update of all the polling we put out. Thanks for watching.